Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and welcome to all. Uh, this is a demo on how to edit your SRS or better known as software requirement specification document based on your project. And this template is specifically used by the software engineering students. Okay, first foremost, make sure you download this template from Kalam, which is FCOM SRS template. And then um, you open the template and you can find the first page here. So basically you can find in the round, sorry, in the red box here is the year of the, um, this document is being created. That means in this case is 2020. And then you can see the front page, it consists of the software requirement specification, SRS. You don't have to edit this, but you have to put your project name here. That means just click on it and then you can edit. And then moving on downwards, here comes the document approval um, page in which you have to state who authenticates this um, document and who approves it, which means the client. And then um, you mention, have to mention um, the software you use to write down this document. In this case, it's Microsoft Word. So you put the Microsoft Word, which year, either 2010 or 2017. And you have to mention where this document is stored. So in terms of current situation, most of the documents are stored in Google Drive. So you can mention the archiving place as Google Drive. Okay. Now we are here at the table of content in which please make sure you edit the document accordingly. So later on when you have done, you can right click on the table of content and update field. As long as you don't make changes on the content, that means from 1.1 until 2.2, you just need to update the page numbers. Okay. And then moving on. You have list of figures in which you have to state all the figures that is mentioned throughout this document with its figure number followed by the figure page. And then list of tables, that means the tables that has been mentioned in this document. Same, you have the figure number, the figure name and also the pages. And followed by list of embed appendixes if you have any. And then followed by the first chapter. Okay, relatively the content is similar on how I mentioned in the previous video on to the contents of the SRS, but I made it more clear here. First 1.1, you have to mention the project description. Okay, when you say project description, that means you have to story a little bit on your project. That means the solution you're using, you're creating a system or algorithm whatsoever, you have to story your project. Okay, you may include all the diagrams to the related modules in your project. So if you have multiple modules, make sure you describe one module in one paragraph. We may start with the, the name of the module followed by the purpose and also how the module functions and the input for the module and also the output for the module. So you can make it into one paragraph per module. Okay, after 1.1, you have 1.2, which is system identification. Okay, here the system ident identification, if you remember during classes you learn in software requirement workshop, you create an identification number for your system or your project. So here you have to create the system ident identification for this SRS document. So after you obtain the system identification numbers, please update the footer based on the new number. Okay, and then coming down to 1.3, here is where you insert your context diagram. Remember, before you insert the diagram, please mention, okay, figure what shows the context diagram of the project. So you insert the context diagram. So do not forget the context diagram. You have the users and you have the solution or the system and followed with the crossover between the user and the system, the arrows 
that shows the data not functions but data okay and then once you enter the figures please explain in detail all the components in the context diagram that means you start with the user who is the user and then what the role of the user after you finish the user explain about the system and then explain about the uh, the data flow and then coming to 1.4 you expand your context diagram into data flow diagram let's say instance here you want to um, explore the data flow diagram into level 0 or level 1 then you create a subsection okay one is that dfd level 0 and another one dfd level 1 okay how you story this section is first as usual just like before you insert the data flow diagram figure first and then you follow the explanation of each component okay and then we enter to chapter 2 in which this is the use case diagram and description okay you already learned use case diagram in software recording workshop but how you're going to explain here is first you have to put the overall use case diagram with the user with the use cases with the system boundary and then you name the figure figure you do not have to, you must not forget that it is based on the chapter name and the position in this case the use case diagram the main use case diagram will be figure 2.1 which is use case overall use case diagram and then you create a subsection describing each component of the use case the diagram okay that means you explain what is it the diagram is all about that means you have the use case you can have one subsection for the use case one subsection for the system boundary that means system boundary you have to explain what's the system's name and also the user another subsection okay and then you create another subsection describing the use cases okay or there's another way you can do this is how you have already the main use case diagram and then you create a subsection describing about the use case each single use cases and then you put the use case description below of the use cases so that is also acceptable as long as you create the right the sorry the use case description correctly describes the use case diagram and make sure you give the use case and id okay and then followed by sequence diagram sequence diagram reflects on the use case diagram you have built if you made the first method then you have to organize in a way the sequence diagram follow sequence diagram following the first method okay so make sure you insert the figure in each subsection and then explain about the sequence diagram one sequence diagram and one description in one subsection so relate the sequence diagram to the related use case diagram that means after you draw the use sequence diagram make sure you relate it to the relevant use case id from the top down from the previous section okay after you complete that you enter to chapter three okay a chapter three relatively, relatively has two subsections which is 3.1 is interface design so here you have to explain in detail all the components in the interface design as you remember in my last video i already mentioned that you can make it in two types one is sketch which is black and white um, black and white uh, diagram and another one is colored interface where you have the color in it you can choose either one but make sure the interface design is related to is the sequence diagram and the use case diagram since you already related the use case diagram to the sequence diagram then it's easier for you to actually relate it to the interface design okay and then moving to the last subsection is 3.2 hardware and software specification here in the previous uh, lecture video i already shown how to create this table so please make sure you create this table and then categorize each based on the description and also the purpose so you have to list down hardware and software that is related to this project okay not the ones like um, printers papers it's not relevant the one that is relevant to your project which means you cannot execute your project if you don't have this hardware if you don't have this software okay 
So that's all for uh, the SRS. So you have conclude as a conclusion. We have three chapters. So chapter one has four subsections, which are project description, system identification, context diagram, and data flow diagram. And chapter two followed by use case diagram and description and sequence diagram for 2.2. And then chapter three contains of interface design and 3.1 is interface design and 3.2 is hardware and software specification. This is the basic template that you can follow. But pending on the discussion with your supervisor, you might add some elements inside your SRS. So it depends on the project and also your um, advice from your supervisor. So I hope this video has given you um, an insight on how to write the content. So see you again. Welcome. Bye.